So today, I'm going to take you along for the journey of moving from Sweden to Southeast Asia. I'll show you step by step how I get settled and then talk about why I'm doing this. So let me introduce myself, tell you a bit about my story leading up to this point, and then we'll get into the more practical stuff. And then I will show you something that really surprised me about coming to Thailand. So if you're new here, welcome. And I'm Stefan. This channel is all about exploration, everything from the world around us to human consciousness. So from an early age, I was lucky enough to travel around Europe a lot, almost every year with family and friends. And it was mainly around the Mediterranean countries, but it was also a road trip around the Alps and through the continent to the British Isles and more. Uh, so Europe is a really cool area with a lot of cultures stacked on top of each other in a small area. Uh, it has been very interesting to explore. So that is probably what sparked my love for the sea and the mountains and just human culture in general. And then, once at university, I arranged an internship for three months in East Africa, Tanzania to be exact. And I was at a safari camp studying economics and tourism, geography. So out in the middle of nowhere, uh, far away from civilization for three months, and I learned so much about East African culture, uh, specifically Tanzania, of course. I also learned about myself, my behavior, and my own culture, and how it contrasts against East African culture. Uh, so this was one of the most amazing experiences of my life, and I had never felt so alive before. It felt like I would do anything to keep exploring the world like this. Uh, now, this was before graduation, like I told you, at university, so I didn't realistically have the resources to do that yet. So, a few years went by, uh, I got a job through my master's degree in geography, and I worked a few office jobs, saved some money, and, uh, you know, kept dreaming about exploring the world. But all I wanted was to study and explore the cool things that were happening on the surface of the Earth, like any geographer or traveler would. And then, once ready, I took off on a long journey with no end date. It was time. I headed west from Sweden to Iceland, just a dream destination for anyone who loves unique nature and culture, for that matter. But they are also part of the Nordic countries, so it is quite familiar to me. But then continuing on that theme of amazing nature, I went to Banff National Park in Canada near Calgary and absolutely jaw-dropping, let me tell you. I mean, there's not really time for the details in this video, but the story goes that I continue south through North America, uh, the US, Mexico. I spent a lot of time in Mesoamerica and South America, in fact, to learn about the Inca, the Maya, and the Aztec. And now, my friends, it was time for Asia. So I crossed the Pacific uh, after having explored North, Central, and South America. I headed to Japan and Korea. Incredibly fascinating countries here, too. Uh, they have such unique culture and also beautiful nature. So it was really something to explore. Now, I had previously been on vacation from work, exploring somewhere near in the region, uh, like the Great Wall of China, Beijing, and then also the Pacific Islands, like Fiji. And then I went to Australia and New Zealand. So it's such a wonderful part of the world. And then next, I moved on to what is now my absolute favorite region of the world. You guessed it, Southeast Asia. So I explored Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia. You know, it was wow. And all I can think about after that was, how can I live here? And then I returned to Sweden for a family matter. And after that, this uh, global crisis with lots of travel restrictions, let's just call it that, happened. And uh, 
I put my head down, I acquired more resources, gathered more savings, and you know what? Now it's time. Let's move to Southeast Asia. I'll take you along for the journey and show you exactly how I did it. Let's go. So I am from the north of Sweden, so I had to travel down to Stockholm, and then I flew in via Europe, Central Europe, Poland, Slovakia, a bit of Hungary, Romania, crossing the Black Sea into Georgia, Azerbaijan, across the Caspian Sea, Turkmenistan, India, Pakistan, and then slightly across Myanmar, until finally landing in Bangkok, Thailand. So, now we're here, and there are a few things that need to get sorted. Let's get into it. Let's talk about money. So, if you have any cash lying around at home, uh, please bring that to Thailand or Southeast Asia, wherever you're going, and uh, exchange money at the airport where you land, because the best exchange rate will not be found in your home country, but at the airport. And at first, when you land in the airport, of course, in most places of the world, there will be lots of exchange booths on the way, uh, directly as you land. Do not be tempted by this. Uh, just move straight past them, in the case of Bangkok and in many other places, uh, because the best exchange rate will exchange rates will be found at a place called Super Rich in Thailand. And the best one is located near the airport rail link. So that's on the bottom floor of Suwanapum Airport. More on that in a second. But that's only for the initial few Thai baht. Uh, so the best way to get larger amounts of cash in Thailand is actually through an ATM. Now, there will be a fee associated with this. So withdraw as much money as you can, basically, as much as you feel safe carrying. Uh, anyway, put the bulk of it, most of it, in your bag, and then take some of it with you in a, your daily carry, and that way you'll feel safe. Now, if you have a Thai bank account, there will be no fee associated with this, and also you won't even need cash, because a lot of people in Thailand right now, they have crossed over to using QR code scan to pay for things, and of course, your credit card like Visa or MasterCard or debit card, if you call it will also work just fine in many places of Thailand. Okay, now we know about the money. It's time to get connected. And of course, nowadays, just like with payments, technology is always moving forward. So you can always get an eSIM on your phone, if it's a modern phone, uh, before you land at the airport and just get data right away as the wheels hit the ground. Uh, but that is actually more expensive than getting a local SIM card. So. I would advise you, if you're budget conscious, to get a physical SIM card and the best shops, according to me, are called AIS, which is uh, the green shop, it's one of the providers. The other good one is called True, and that's the red shop, for reference, uh, also very good. Uh, these places always have customer service that will help you get settled, because uh, it's not always so obvious if you're not used to this. And uh, they will, as I said, help you with everything. And also they have booths at the airport, which would be very convenient, right? But then again, that would be the more expensive option for getting a physical SIM card. So what I'm going to do and what I would recommend you do is take a half hour journey with the airport rail link into Bangkok, the central parts or wherever you're staying, head to a mall and then go to one of these green or red shops and have them help you get your SIM card. This will be the cheapest option. So on that note, let's talk about how to get to the city. Now you can always just step out of the airport and get a cab, a taxi, which is notoriously the most expensive way to get out of the airport. And some people will even try to scam you because you may be a tourist without so much experience about how much it costs in Thailand. Uh, but if you value convenience and you have the means, it is actually a great option to just get you straight to your hotel or wherever you're staying. Uh, although sometimes Bangkok has a lot of traffic. Uh, so by all means, go for it if that's your thing. And then 
If you have your eSIM, you have your connectivity, uh, you can also get the Grab app and have someone pick you up that way. It's also very convenient. Now, I would actually warmly recommend the airport rail link that I've been mentioning here. It's a train that takes half an hour and goes from the bottom floor of Savonapum Airport right next to the best exchange rate booth that I talked about. Uh, so the train costs between 15 and 45 baht, depending on the distance you travel from the airport. And uh, I'm gonna head in, get off at the next to last stop, Racha Prarop, it's called in Thai, and it costs 42 or 43 baht, if I remember correctly. Uh, from there you can just take a short walk a bit south to Central World Mall, which is where I will get my SIM card. Now this all sounds so serious, but it really isn't difficult at all. And if you need any help, just ask a local, or even like someone who looks experienced, like an expat or something. Expat. <laughs> Funny word. It means immigrant, right? Let's be real. But uh, anyway, it's just in Thai culture to help you. They're very humble and polite. Now, English is not so widespread, unfortunately, so you might have to be quite patient, but it's really in their nature to help you. So if you have questions, just ask away and you will get all the help you need. Now, speaking of Thai culture, we really have to try food and drinks. This is a very popular social meal in Thailand. It's called Mu Kata and is a Thai style barbecue with boiling water around it. You sit together and cook the meal at the table. Another great social meal is Thai-style suki, or shabu, if you're familiar with that, from Japan. Maybe even like fondue from France, where you boil your food in tasty broth together at the table. Very cool, I must say, that you also get great service from the robots around here. They're so nice. Okay, most important thing acquired. An iced Thai tea. Cha Thai Yen. <sighs> Must try. Okay. SIM card acquired. Now, let's go and find a place to stay. A hotel, an apartment, something like that. Anyway, I love walking around the streets of Bangkok. Just look at this. Street food everywhere. Now, when it comes to finding a place to stay, uh, good places to look is Agoda, Booking.com, even Airbnb for the short term. Now, if you had a crazy travel day or something, it might be a good idea to book one night at a hotel in advance, so you just know you have a place to stay and you're super tired, maybe you can head there. But normally, even if I had a travel day, I don't like to book so much in advance because I like to check out the neighborhoods and see what it's like and then I'll just get something uh, right there where I like it the most and you know oftentimes it won't be full so you can just find a place quite easily uh, especially in a city like Bangkok all right so I think I found my room let's go and check it out together <laughs> Very spacious. <laughs> so a living room, couch, armchair. Not a bad view either. Kitchen, coffee maker. Wow, microwave. Let's see what we have. Okay. <laughs> Four bottles of water, very nice. Lots of coffee. Do we have, can actually, it's pretty hot. Let's turn on the AC. Nice. So a little bit older standard it seems, but very, very spacious. <laughs> yeah. Nice bedroom. Dedicated workspace over there.
Okay, so this must be the bathroom. Hello? <laughs> Nice. We have got the uh, bum gun, of course. Very nice, very nice. Uh, so I really like this, actually, an office chair and dedicated workspace. Low again in the mirror. There's a huge closet here as so well. <laughs> that could be another room. <laughs> all right, all right. So actually, I should really make use of all that closet space, right? Let's go. Uh, let's see here. Ah, that's all my stuff. Almost filled it up. I am very happy with that. So that's my accommodation. It's about $25. I mean, honestly, it seems like a family room with all this space and a quick kitchen, but uh, super nice. Good value for money. Great location. So I'll take it. And then if you're actually moving here and trying to live here in the long term, uh, we got to talk about long term renting or condos, apartments, townhouses. So once you've found your neighborhood where you feel really good, maybe it's time to think about that. So I'll get into that more in later videos. OK, let's talk about the culture. Uh, now, this last step that I'm going to talk about is very important and it will completely dictate your experience of being in the country. Uh, so first things, you should learn a little bit. You don't have to be an expert, but just a few words of the local language. So in Thai, I would suggest learning Swati Khap, meaning hello. And then just the basics, you know, just uh, how are you doing? Sabai di mai? And then you can learn to say thank you, maybe. So that's just good basics to know. And even if it's not a lot of Thai, it shows a lot of respect that you tried to learn a little bit. And then you'll get along much better with the Thais. Uh, and now remember, their English is not always so widespread. Also, the word khap is for men. And it's a sign of politeness. You add it on to the end of your sentence. Now, if you're a lady, you say ka instead. So there you go. That'll get you very far. Another few random tidbits, but very useful in Thailand, believe me, is do not point at things or people with your feet, especially not a statue of the Buddha or something. That will get people very uncomfortable uh, because the feet are seen in Thai culture as very dirty, which, I mean, there's a lot to that in any culture. Uh, also, do not touch people on the head. That's another thing that will make them uncomfortable. So unless you're very close, then it might be OK. But you know, keep that in mind. Also, don't show too much skin. Now, this applies mainly, especially at temples, where you have to cover your shoulders and knees, uh, especially around the monks, but also just in general. Even if you're in the streets, you're a man, maybe you take your shirt off, walk around shirtless in the city, don't do it. Sometimes you'll see like a red light district in Thailand and, you know, there's always that reputation. Just like Amsterdam is more than De Wallen or whatever it's called, the red light district. Bangkok has the same, but it's like 0.1% of the country and it's very isolated. And then in reality, 99.9% .9 of the country is incredibly conservative. So do not show too much skin. Unless you're like at the beach having a swim or something. It's okay. But even then you'll see the Thais. They'll have their full bathing suits on instead of a bikini a lot of the time. And yeah, that's just how it goes. But, you know, as I said, similar things uh, exist in many cultures. So just act with politeness and respect that will get you really far and it'll definitely enhance your experience being in the country. So to answer the question directly that was posed in the title of the video, I moved to Southeast Asia because it made me feel so alive and it's my favorite region 
of the world. Maybe you can even tell. Okay, so if this is appealing to you as well, if you want to come along for the journey, please just, you know, press the like button, maybe subscribe if you really like it, and uh, stay tuned. It would really mean the world to me. So, ขอบคุณมากครับ Bye bye.